What's up, everybody? My name's Aaron Ciotti. Everybody calls me Ciotti, and I have no idea why that just froze. Oh, because it's the end of the video. Good seeing you. Where we at? Where we at here? Well, I feel like I feel like I'm off the top of the the thing. I feel like I'm off the top of the. Th oh God! Stop playing commercials. Come on now. Come on now, royalty free music. Hold on, hold on. There we go. That's a little better. Yeah, there we go. Frovid 19 is over, everybody. Frovid 19 has come to an end. I got a haircut. It's a little too short on the sides, but I always have to do that because my hair grows really fast and I'm a cheap bastard and I only get my hair cut every three or two months. So, you know, if you don't like it, it's okay. Uh, today we're going to do some simming. We're going to answer some questions, and we're even going to spend a little bit of time with this little guy. This little guy. This is a CB 2.5, um, pretty much identical to what I was flying at Quad Camp Atlanta way back when, and I haven't had it put together for many years, and... Um, this is going to be something kind of cool. What I realized, so when I slouch, when I slouch, I lose, I look, I look ridiculous. So we got to, we got to meet in the middle here. Um, what I realized is, not what I realized, what I was able to get my hands on are these uh, Get FPV. Two inch ducts. These are incredibly strong. GetRC makes two inch and three inch versions of these ducts, and they're injection molded, and they are tough as hell. Like legit strong, really good plastic, really good bracing. Um, so what I realized is these are basically this is a two and a half inch prop. These guards. As, as are most guards, um, the guards are, are usually about a half an inch bigger than the prop that they can uh, uh, house. Uh, so this is a two and a half inch prop, and you'll notice that it's pretty much the exact same size as this two inch guard, um, which, and, and then I realized that I have a two and a half inch specific frame floating around. So yeah, this is gonna be kind of interesting so the but the problem with that is the two and a half inch <laughs> uh, the RPM requirements for two and a half inch props versus two inch props are very very different um, and so this is basically going to be an insta 360 go carrier um, and in a freestyle, for, so for freestyle, it's going to carry, uh, it's going to run two and a half inch props on these RCX $8 per 1304 5000 kV motors. Um, and it's going to run on 4S 450 batteries. That, that is like the exact setup that I was flying three years ago at Quad Camp Atlanta, which is really funny. Literally these same motors at might actually be these actual I think it's these actual motors <laughs> these specific ones because the uh, the the leads on these on this particular set of RCX 1304s fours uh, the leads have gotten shorter and shorter and shorter and now the the by this point the lead on this damn thing is about as short as it's gonna get like I, I kind of can't go any shorter on the uh, on the lead on these motors, um, but I mean that's fine. So yeah, this will be a um, uh, in in freestyle mode uh, with the Insta 360 Go up front on a little simple TPU mount. Um, this should be really interesting. Two and a half inch props, uh, 4S 450 batteries. These ducts, when these guys go on, two inch propellers are only going to be able to fit. So I need to crank up the RPM. To make up the power difference, and I'm thinking I'm gonna do that with the this new uh, GNB 5S 550. Uh, it's it's a little heavy, 
But when I'm putting these guards on, it's going to be in Cinewoop mode. So I think that'll be okay, right? Like I won't be throwing it up over trees and whatnot. Um, so we'll see. I don't know. It should be kind of interesting. Uh, again, these are 5,000 KV. So to put these on 5S is basically increasing their KV by 25%, which essentially means that I'm turning this 5,000 KV motor into a... What's 25% of 5,000? <laughs> 12, 12, 5, right? So I'm, it's the equivalent of 4S on a 62, 6250 KV motor. Um, and so I hope that's enough. I hope that's enough KV. Um, if it's not enough KV, I'm going to be very annoyed because I'm putting a, um, I'm putting a, the hack RC BL Heli 32, uh, ESC, 20 by 20 ESC in here. And this ESC goes up to 5S, but it doesn't go up to 6S. Um, I hope I don't regret that. Um, because if I have to switch it, the, uh, the iFlight, the iFlight makes a BL Heli 20 by 20 ESC that I have in the Acrobrat, uh, which, um, uh, Alex is helping me figure something out on black box with the tune that, that iFlight ESC might not be, it might be dropping an arm. Um, black box will tell the tale. But, um, yeah, I can't speak for that iFlight ESC. I really do want to try this Hack RC ESC, though, because if that iFlight one is, is fucked, um, yeah, I want something else to recommend as soon as possible. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm, I'm super interested. Um, it'll carry an Insta360 Go without any props in view, and that's pretty goddamn cool. And with two-inch props and the prop guards on, I can get kind of dumb with it and crash it into, you know, car interiors and people's hair. Hopefully not people's hair. Uh, in the chat, Y'all Man was first. Who else do we have? Kavish... Wow, that's a tough one. Kavish Senthilkumar. Kavish Senthilkumar is here. Emerald Link is here. Potent to go. Lerul 2, Old Guy in a Drone, Adam Antipop, Y'all Man Flights, Proton to Go, KD2RDH, Larry, Arctic Ice Drone, Ken Hill, Adam Antipop again, FPV Wannabe, John Dyson, Richard Warwick, S. Grace, uh, Zach Barnes, Ken Hill, Frank Nicholas is in the house, Louis Ru Luis Ruiz, Mustang Pilot 1, uh, just because Adam Antipop again, Mork Mork is here, <laughs> Oliver Coates, uh, Chris Connor, Daryl Hickman, Frank Nicholas again, Adam Antipop again, Chan Wang, uh, Polytheus FPV, Richard Warwick, Brian Ladmerall is in the house, Tiago Ramos is also in the house, Flying in Braille, uh, Stefan H. Steve SMC FPV is here, uh, Drone Pilot again, Private Island FPV, uh, the The Guinness is here. Why two thus? Um, Flying in Braille again. Burn DSC. Mikael Backstrom is here. Adam Antipop again. Every single time I see Adam Antipop, for some reason, my brain reads it. Uh, we be new and how? Ho we be new. Damn. Niwen Huis. We be Niwen Huis. There we go. I think I got close. Hopefully, I got cr close. Uh, Burn DSC again, Drone Pilot again, Private Island FPV again, Christoph DeWitt again, uh, no, not again, but for the first time, Squishy FPV, S-Q-U-S-H-Y, I think that's Squishy, Stuck in Trees, uh, Sebastian Martinez, Pilot Carbon, Ez Ezekiel 1974, Burn DSC again, NB is here, uh, NB is the chassis code of my Miata. Oddly enough, fun fact. Chris Connor, Oliver Coates, Cosmic FPV, Jesse Stanley, Chris Connor, uh, Lapsus Antipetus, Blind Luck FPV, Richard Warwick again, Chris Connor, and NB again. What's up, everybody? And Jared Schnell. All right, goodbye. <laughs> uh, if you want to, if you want to message me direct in the chat, all you got to do is type my name, Ciadi FPV, no spaces. You can put an at in front of it, but you don't have to. Um, if you just type CIDFPV, it'll light your comment up in orange so that I know that you're talking to me. 
Uh, if you don't do that, I'm going to assume that you're talking to other people in the chat. Uh, if you don't know, if you're new here, the people in the chat are extremely uh, knowledgeable, talented, all those good things. Um, so when they give you uh, some feedback, it's usually going to be good. If you still want me to weigh in, totally fine. Um, uh, collective folks, if you see a good question that deserves being talked about and I'm not tagged in it, please do me a favor, copy it, paste it, tag me, and let's talk about it. You guys know the questions that we should be talking about. Um, Protonigo says, one arm slash bottom plate on my glide keeps bending slightly. How much until it'll be a problem? Like five millimeters. One arm slash bottom plate keeps bending. I can't picture, I can't picture that. Um, I don't ever get bends. I, I just, they, they just break eventually. Um... Proton, send me a send me a picture. I want to see this bend. Um, I've never had that. Uh, Tiago's here and says hello, hello, hello. Yaman Flights uh, has used a computer. Coming hopefully. I will be to try the sim thing soon. Oh, has a used computer coming. Got it. So hopefully he'll be able to try the sim thing soon. Got it. When you read that as one big random lump of words, it makes no sense. But then when you read it like an actual human, you know, here on Earth. Makes perfect sense. Y'all man flight says not a haircut. You got <laughs> Larry says you got half a haircut. That's what I said when I went in there. I said I want you to give me a haircut only on the sides and leave the top alone. And then she did that, and the top looked absolutely asinine. It was just way too long. So so the top ended up getting cut down. Um, but I'm interested to see what this looks like in like three months from now because there's no fucking shot in hell I'll get a haircut before then. Um, yeah, maybe I can do a mohawk with it. We'll see. Uh, Frank Nicholas says, somebody got a haircut. It was me, Frank. I did. Me. <laughs> uh, Tiago says, lawnmower attack or drone attacked your hair? Neither. I actually paid for it. I had a trained professional do it in a safe setting uh, with lots of sanitization and masks. And it was great. Uh, my my haircut lady, when people try to, uh, well, when people make an appointment with her or try to make an appointment with her, she has a questionnaire now that they have to fill out. And then she looks them up on Facebook and she looks at their pictures and she sees if they wear a mask because she's had to fight with people over the mask thing and it's not worth it. Um, I live here in Atlanta, Georgia, which is in the South. Uh, and a lot of people wrongly think that wearing a mask takes away their freedoms, spelled F-R-E-E-D-U-M-B, uh, apostrophe S, yes. um, which is just not true. It just prevents other people from dying. So do it, or I will attack you. Uh, so yeah, she had it all under control, and I thought that was great. And now I have shorter hair. Yo Man Flight says, Prince Toadstool. Am I Prince Toadstool? Oh, God, are you? Um, Private Island says, at work, should be working. Tell me to get to work. No. Fuck that. Don't work. Um, scroll, 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 scroll. Yo, man says, I'll send more of the Insta360 Go 30 angle mounts. Oh. Oh. Oh, right. Oh, yeah, right. Right, 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 sir. I hadn't even thought through it. I hadn't even thought that far ahead yet. Yeah, it looks like this one's gonna work. Looks like this one will work here. Ooh, yeah. Alright, alright, alright. Uh, my plan was to use um, since these these nice protective mounts just showed up. Oh, also, 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 also. So two, two reasons I was just gonna use this simple uh, TPU lightweight mount and you just put it right on the front uh, one of the front standoffs and the Insta360 go so I, I was gonna use this and just chance it because I bought my Insta360 go on Amazon and I got the Asurion protection which does cover physical damage um, but also because Best Buy now has the Insta360 go uh, in stock on their website I don't know if they have it in stores 
Um, so yeah, at this point, I don't really care. I will smash up the Insta360 Go uh, and then do the Asurion with um, Amazon to, and, and I, they just refund you basically. Uh, and then I'll start buying my Insta360 Goes from Best Buy so that I can get the ThinkGeek protection plan and yeah, walk in, swap them out. Like OG Session 5 days, which I missed out on. I was not flying 5 inch uh, when the Session 5s were available in Best Buy. And um, I, so I totally missed out on that, on all those Session 5 shenanigans, being able to fly as reckless as you want and just walk into Best Buy with smashed, destroyed Session 5s and pay like 20, I think at the time it was like 20 bucks or 30 bucks. To, I think it was twenty to get it to get a new session five. Um, yeah, I missed that. That sucks. Uh, thanks, y'all, man. That'll be dope. Uh, what else do we have? Flying in Braille. You need to do who's in the chat, bro. Great minds think alike. Flying in Braille caught me, not having done it, but without even having seen his comment, I remembered and I did it. God damn it. Uh, what else? You can find me on YouTube, Patreon, Instagram, Facebook, PayPal. Uh, links down below. The very first link down below is Linktree, and that's one link that'll hit all of those. So if you hit the Linktree link, that'll show you all the spots. Uh, Etsy, too. I got some stuff going on on Etsy, and even on Fiverr. On Fiverr, uh, you can get me to... I, I'm, I'm starting to do my FPV instructor thing that I want to be my long-term kind of deal and uh, it's up on Fiverr there is flight instruction that you can get from me one-on-one -on -one, uh, over on Fiverr there's a gig with three different levels three different options 20 bucks 40 bucks 60 bucks uh, that pricing will go up considerably uh, in the future but for right now I'm, I'm keeping that pricing nice and low because I just want to get practice um, so yeah, take advantage of that. Those prices will at least double, uh, in the future if FPV, if, if the, the FPV instructor is going to become something that I do full time. Um, so yeah, if you want to get in on half price FPV instruction via Velocidrone or Liftoff, now's the time, motherfuckers! Head on over to, uh, hit the link tree. And then there's a Linktree link below, and then there's a, yeah, it'll link you over to Fiverr. And then, do me a favor, if you choose to do it, just be gentle and patient and kind, because I haven't I haven't done anything on Fiverr before. Um, my beautiful wife, Kristen, has. Uh, she's partly built her career, uh, her freelance career, on Fiverr. So she can always help me. But, yeah, just be, just be patient with me while I figure Fiverr out. Uh, on Etsy, there are the sticker packs, um, two different sticker packs, one of them is all logo-based, holographic sticker, matte sticker, and a magnet, uh, with my, uh, logo on them. Nobody has gotten a logo pack, logo sticker pack yet, which makes me sad, it makes me think you guys hate me. No, it doesn't, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Um, here's my pitch for the, uh, for the, the logo sticker pack. This is the one that you really want here, this magnet, because you can put it on the, like, the inside hatchback of your, of your hatchback car, and then when you open the hatch, you'll have, yeah, your FPV stickers. It's a, it's the, the inside of the hatch of your car is a neat spot to put FPV stickers, because you don't see them, and then when you're flying and you open it up, you see them. Or maybe I'm just a fucking nerd. Uh, and then the other sticker pack that has sold a couple times now, thank you to everybody that has gotten it, uh, has a nut grabber in it. And then it's got this wonderful collective sticker in Purple Hollow and then this complete ripoff um, NASA sticker. So yeah, hit up the, uh, the Etsy store if you want to support me. Yeah, the stickers are expensive, but you're supporting me. You're, I'm, I'm not in the game here to sell stickers. And try to live off of the the profits of selling stickers, I, you know, it's something for you guys to support me. The, the put it this way: the only people that are going to buy those stickers are the people that want to support me. So, yeah. Uh, Tiny trainer. Today, 
may be the last day that this tiny trainer of mine here is on 3S. Um, I've got all five of the 3S batteries that I've got charged up and I'm gonna fly all five of them. Uh, these are Emacs Eco, oh, excuse me. These are Emacs Eco 1404 6000s. Um, I had to go all the way up to this KV uh, in order to get what I consider to be a normal amount of freestyle flying power out of this tiny trainer. Um, if you don't know, this rig was built kind of specifically as a DRL trainer rig. Um, the DRL rig is called the Racer, and it's very heavy and it's very underpowered. So this rig was built to be a miniature trainer version of that. So most of the setups that are out there are very underpowered because it was built for a specific task. Um, I don't care about racing, uh, so I don't, uh, yeah, so having something that's underpowered just frustrates me. Um, so I kept going up and up and up and up on the KV, and then eventually when I got here to 6,000 KV, um, that's where I became happy with the amount of power that this thing had. But on 3S, with these motors, with, with big uh, tri-blade 3-inch props, uh, battery sag becomes an issue. Uh, I'm gonna see how I'm gonna fly one battery on these by blades. I know I'm not, not gonna like them, but just in fairness, I'm gonna do that and then I'm gonna switch over to the uh, the different tri blade options. And what I'm pretty sure is gonna happen is that it, it, there's still gonna be battery sag that drives me insane, and I'm gonna move this thing over to 4S. Um, there is, uh, so Eric Allen, one of our uh, longtime patrons, sent me this little guy. This is a GNB prototype 300 MAH 4S, uh, 80C, and uh, we were talking about it last night. Uh, we're pretty sure that this is a HV battery. Um, I would like to ask, if, if this becomes a thing... Uh, I'm going to try to get it in non-HV, uh, but we'll, we'll, we'll see. For the time being, um, Eric is sending me another one of these that's 350 MAH. So I'm going to have a 300 and a 350 MAH. Um, this uh, Beta FPV AIO board in here is 2S to 4S. So first of all, it'll take 4S no problem in theory. Um, these AIOs catch on fire a lot. If that happens, that happens. I mean, we'll see. But it claims it'll handle 4S, and 4S should fix the battery sag issues. Um, so all I really need is somebody to redesign. Oh, so here's the other thing that's really nice, that's potentially going to be really nice about this battery. Um, these uh, GNB 450s and the Tattoo R-Line 550s, uh, fit really nice in the battery pouches that they give you for this. Um, but, well, I'll show you guys. So this is the GNB 450. It's a little bit lighter than the Tattoo R-Line. And so here's how I always test um, CG. You just, ver as gently as possible, pinch a spot that you know to be the center line. Right? So in this case... It's really easy because there's a there's a set of, um, uh, yeah. You just this is where the center line is, where the middle of the AIO board is, and so and when I do that, as you can see, it's ass heavy, um, and the ass heaviness of this really does come out when when you're flying it, um, and you jump off the throttle, uh, and this battery is quite a bit shorter, as you can see there. So, this 4S battery will, in theory, not only correct the battery sag issue that I'm having, um, but it will also improve the, uh, the center of gravity on this guy, which is a good thing. Uh, the only flip side of that is, before I, I ruined it by accident, um, uh, <laughs> sorry, Cement. Cement Kid uh, had printed me out a version of this uh, front canopy piece that had an Insta360 Go holder in the front here. Uh, and oddly enough, that really did improve the, uh, the center of gravity, right? Because you're adding 
20 or 18 grams to the nose out here so that it but it actually made it nose heavy um and i don't know having the insta 360 go up there um the, there is prop in view which is kind of annoying i mean they are great props which is not a huge deal um but yeah i don't know there was prop in view there is another insta 360 go holder that holds it up here but then again you're you're wrecking the the cg so um yeah i don't know i mean worse yeah i i i think for right now for me this is just going to be an fpv only rig i'm going to get the 4s thing going and then um I don't know. I, I, I'm so I'm so torn uh, because I, I do want the capability. It, it's I really like the idea of having HD on everything, um, but I don't know. Maybe it would be cool to have one just this, not with an Insta 360 Go. I don't know. I'm still figuring it out. If um, I think what'll happen is if I put this onto 4S with this battery and the 350. And um, I like the way that it flies. Uh, Eric and I are thinking about having a run of these batteries made. Whichever ones end up being better. The 300, the 350, um, maybe HV, maybe not HV. Uh, we're going to figure that out. But uh, yeah, like I said, this is a prototype battery. But GNB will make you... A, a, you can order a run of batteries. I think you have to get... Um, I don't know. It, you have to do an actual run. It's probably going to be uh, an amount of money. Let's say like a thousand bucks, right? Because they're going to have a minimum order quantity. So um, Eric and I are talking about maybe splitting it, um, split that run, and then that's something that I could put onto the. Um, I could sell them on the Etsy store because I know. Well, I don't know, but well, yeah, I do know. I know that a lot of you guys built tiny trainers. And if you're a freestyle pilot, I, I, I have a feeling that you're kind of in the same boat as I am, uh, looking for more power, uh, I hope, because that's kind of the only reason that anybody's going to buy these batteries. So, but, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. Uh, but there's, there's cool things, interesting things coming for um, the Tiny Trainer. I just have to figure out what the hell... I don't know. I, the, I, the 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 um, the other thing is, this is uh, it's only two millimeter thick carbon. So adding even eighteen grams, I, I just I don't necessarily know if I want to add any weight to this thing whatsoever. Um, and this little four S three hundred or four S three fifty should be a little bit lighter than these three S four fifties. Um, so we'll, we'll be pulling the weight down a little bit on this guy as well. Um, and then, oh, so the other thing, God, so you won't have to run these Emacs Eco motors. You won't have to go up to these 6,000 kV motors once you're on 4S. Um, the majority of the 1404 motors are like 5,000, 4,500, 4,000 kV. Um, and those kVs will work an awful lot better on 4S, uh, for freestyle. So yeah, cool stuff coming. Uh, more more testing required, but um, yeah, exciting times. And uh, you can absolutely put HD on the inside of this guy, um, as I showed on the the original version of this build that I did. Uh, it's just when you put HD on the inside of this and run it through the existing camera with like a Runcam Nano Three, uh, Split Nano Three, or something like that. Um, you get acres of prop and view. This um, this FPV camera location gets a ton of propeller and view. Having the Insta 360 go down here gets a lot less prop and view. Uh, so yeah, I don't know. I'm st I'm still kind of trying to figure it out, but um, it's it's an interesting set of uh, compromises. I guess would be the technical word to use. Uh, yeah, I don't know. We'll see. I, I think for me, this is basically just an exercise in what the hell do I want to do? Like, what's the use for this? Is, is this just, you know, 
a, a rig that I only fly out front in the trees with FPV, and it's just, you know, for the sake of flying, which it very well could be, because it doesn't fly like anything else. It's got this really high prop line, and the, the prop line, basically, the, everything is below the prop line. Like, if, if you look at it like this, the prop line is all the way up here, so the only weight above the prop line is this TPU fin. Um, all the weight on this guy is, is below the prop line, and for me, that makes it fly in a way that kind of doesn't make any sense. <laughs> like, everything that I've got is top mount battery, um, trying to equalize the weight above and below the prop line. So when I fly this, I'm, I'm kind of all thrown off anyway, so I'm, I'm tempted to just leave it exactly like this and just have it be FPV only. By the way, also, Phoenix Nano, holy hell, what a camera. Um, so much so that I've got a Phoenix Nano in a 5-inch rig that I'm looking forward to flying after the stream today. Um, by doing that, I was able to go down to 15 millimeter standoffs on this. Um, so with these 15 millimeter standoffs, the um, this has decreased the amount of torque on the standoffs by about 20, well, not by about, by 25%, going from 20 to 15. Um, so that's going to make these standoffs and just this frame in general uh, quite a bit stronger and, and just essentially more resistant to, to the standoffs bending and creating chaos. Uh, it's and it's it's also lowered the um, or raised it's raised the prop line and it's lowered the center of gravity, which um, I wish there was a way to test that. It, it's it's hard because like the weight as the weight gets when we're talking about center of gravity top to bottom, um, you've obviously so you've got your prop line that I'm doing my best to hold evenly right so you've got the big heavy HD cam very obviously above the prop line and you've got the big heavy battery above the prop line but then when you look below the prop line it's kind of it's kind of shallow right like above the prop line it's pretty tall but below the prop line it's it's kind of shallow um, and I wish there was a way I guess we could like if, if there was a battery on it, I guess we could maybe, like, put a piece of fishing line on... I don't know, I guess we can just do it like this, come to think of it. If we hold one of the props, then we've pretty much got the prop line. Um, we're, you know? You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to... I wish there was a, a an established way to test the uh, the center of gravity above versus below the prop line but it's it's a hard thing to test um, because the the theory being that since above the prop line it's everything is so tall the theory is that you just thank you mm -hmm. you want to just continue to to move the battery and the GoPro down as much as you po as, as you possibly can Tommy uh, oh my god took this to an extreme by connecting the arms to the top plate on his builds um, but I get the feeling that his build ended up being a little bit bottom heavy because of that. Um, and there are some other sacrifices when, when he did that. It, mainly that you have to build the rig upside down now. So maintenance is um, just doesn't seem... I, I haven't owned one of, the, one of his frames, um, one of his 5 inch frames. But maintenance just seems like more of a challenge than a standard 8 standoff uh uh, frame, but uh, yeah, I don't know. Uh, the possibly, mo uh, my assumption is that uh, these rigs are still top heavy because of everything we've been talking about. So continuing to go lower and lower and lower on these eight standoffs, in theory, is going to continue to improve the center of gravity above versus below the prop line. So in theory, this rig has the most balanced. Um, uh, CG, top to bottom CG, or not? <laughs> uh, 
Oh my god, okay. So, there's my big rant. Uh, Weeby Nguyen, who is... Nguyen, who is... I, I, I maybe didn't butcher that. Uh, says, what 2.5 inch frame is that? This is the Rotorious CB 2.5. CB stands for Crybaby. Uh, this is a frame that is no longer available, no longer in production. Uh, I have tried very, 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 very hard um, to convince uh, Rotorious to, to make this frame again, uh, as well as the 3-inch version of this. Um, it, it's been probably over a year, um, and it's, it's just not going to happen. And, that, and that's okay. There, there's some other frames out there that are really nice. Um, currently, what I believe to be the best um, sort of version of this frame that you're going to find uh, that you can actually buy uh, it's looking like it's this BQE Rip Squeak Micro uh, Bill is sold out of these I this is actually the very last one um, but he's got more on the way he said that they'll be in stock at BQE uh, in two weeks so I'm actually going to wait I'm going to wait as long as I can I really want to do this build I, I have a, a donor rig and everything for this build this is a CB3 um, I'm going to take this CB3 apart and put it into this because you guys can buy this and you guys can't buy this CB3. So I'm just going to kind of hoard these CB3 frames for a rainy day um, and I'm going to build something that, that you guys can actually buy because, you know, reasons. <laughs> uh, and it's going to get these new Brother Hobby uh, 1504.5s that I'm super, 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 super excited about. And it's going to be great. So there's that. There's that coming. Prepare for that. Um, scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. <gasps> oh. Okay, I just figured it out. I just figured... I'll show you guys. I just figured it out. I figured out the chat thing. If... So the chat was about to do the thing and zip me to the bottom and lose my place. But what I just now, after over a year of streaming, realized is that when I see the little scroll bar off on the right here, when I see this little scroll bar towards the bottom, I have to grab it and slowly pull it down. And then it won't... It won't screw me over. I, that, that's that's uh, that's big news. That's been fucking. That's been driving me crazy for a long time. Burn DSC sent me a request on Discord. He's trying to get the hang of it. When you do get the hang of it, Burned, you you teach me because I'm the worst on page on uh, on Discord. My main problem on Discord though is just I forget to launch it and go into it, and the the Discord application on my phone refuses to pass notifications and I just I don't go on discord much um, I by the time I've checked YouTube messages patreon messages Instagram messages Facebook messages uh, Fiverr messages Etsy messages uh, I'm tired and uh, and discord just uh, doesn't get much love for me and that's that sucks because discord is a great place but um, what is awesome is that there's so many super cool people here in the collective, which is what all of us nerds call ourselves that are hanging out. Uh, all those awesome collective folks are hanging out in the Discord, saying great things, giving great tech. Um, so yeah, join the Discord. Join Patreon, and then that'll automatically put you in the Discord. And you'll get secret features and... And you'll get uh, you'll get your videos played, which we're gonna do right now, uh, because if you're a patron, pa oh, apparently I forgot how to say the word patron. If you join the Patreon for as low as three dollars a month, ten cents a day, uh, you'll get added to a special uh, group in the Discord channel called live stream law nope called the video collective and you can go in there and post your videos and then at random i'll go and pick one and play it and you'll become e-famous as fuck uh and i'm gonna do that right now so i just went in there and i'm scrolling up and it looks like cgkfpv randomly 
I just picked his video, and uh, I'm gonna kill his audio because I'm trying my best to go copyright free. Uh, so I'm gonna play my own music over this. Here's the link to his video coming at you in the chat if you want to watch it with proper music. But I'm gonna put my own music music under this, and we're gonna watch CGK for a few minutes. Check it out. I'll be right back. I gotta get a drink. There it is, people. CGK getting it done. Go check that video out. Homeboy's got the stick cam and the DVR in there. Getting it done. Go subscribe to CGK or else. Uh, Alright. Uh, Burn DSC says, What was the thing between TBS and Joshua Bardwell? Alright, story time. Um, so, first of all, uh, apologies to, to Joshua for creating... Creating drama for no reason on this channel. I, I, I didn't intend to create drama, but um, I did bring up something from the past that was looking for the best music for your video. That was uh, a bit of a. All right. So here's what happened. Way back when, uh, back when the uh, the immersion RC uh, tester thing. Back when the Immersion RC Power uh, RF uh, meter came out, uh, Joshua did a test of the TBS Unify HV, I believe. I don't think it was the 5 volt. I think it was the HV. I mean, they're the same thing, just with and without a 5 volt BEC on them. Um, but Joshua did a test Immersion RC Tramp versus TBS Unify. And basically, the testing showed on, on the little power meter, and this power meter has been proven to be fairly accurate. It's not perfectly accurate, but plenty accurate for our uses. Um, so this is pretty much a known quantity. It's a, a good enough tester, right? Uh, Joshua did some testing, and the Unify basically... He, he didn't just test these two, but th those were the only two VTXs that um, I was really interested in. Uh, the Unify underperform. So the Unify is supposed to be 800 milliwatts, and the Immersion RC Tramp is supposed to be 600 milliwatts. 
Um, and the results of the testing were basically that the they both, uh, well, the, the Unify underperformed, the Tramp overperformed, uh, but more interestingly, the, the results that actually mattered to me was that um, the the Unify put, was putting out more milliwatts on the lower band, well, for you guys it would be here, for on the lower band of the race band channels, so race band like 1, 2, 3, 4, and then the Immersion RC Tramp uh, outperformed the Unify in the higher race band channels, uh, race band 5, 6, 7, 8. Uh, I was running, uh, at the time, race band 7 on all my rigs, so this is one of the things that led me to buy Tramps. I I've never bought a Unify. Um, what happened shortly after that review really convinced me to buy Tramps, um, which is that Trappy freaked the fuck out on Joshua. Um, Trappy thought that... that I'm going to get some of the details of this of this story wrong, and that's not really fair, so uh, I'm just going to really be very general about it. Essentially, Trappy started acting like a complete crybaby and freaking out, saying that the way that Joshua was doing the testing is incorrect and that the meter was wrong and you have to have a $80,000 piece of lab-grade test gear to do proper testing, and he just went ballistic. Um... Joshua was very, very fair, way more fair than he needed to be in his response. Um, and, yeah, I mean, anybody who's been in this hobby for a while is not surprised at all because this is kind of what Trappy does. He freaks out every once in a while and screams and yells and tends to get his way like people that scream and yell a lot of times do. Um, and in the end, Joshua pulled the videos down. Um, I don't blame him for doing it for even a second, but now we don't have those videos, right? Like, I feel like the testing was perfectly valid here in the real world with a device that, you know, has been shown on multiple occasions to be plenty accurate, right? So it, it, it's, it really... I, I, it really bothered me back then. It, it was one of the reasons that I didn't go to Crossfire, actually. It was one of the reasons why I stayed on uh, 2.4 with RXSRs for so long. Um, because I just refused to support somebody that treated Joshua so poorly um, and was so incredibly unfair. Uh, but eventually... I, and, and I tried R9. I really gave R9 a, as, as good of a shot as I could. But it just kept fail-safing and, and costing me... I mean, shit, one of the fail-safes was like a $300 crash. Um, so, yeah, I couldn't stay with R9. It was just too expensive. Um, and I did get Crossfire, but I am all in on Ghost. Um, Tony Cake, is, who uh, Joshua just interviewed, is an amazing dude, as you guys could probably tell from the interview. Um, just an amazing guy... Uh, I've met him a couple times, and yeah, just just a genuine human being, a nice person, and I've never gotten that vibe from Trappy. I've, I've gotten quite the opposite vibe. In fairness, I've never met him. Uh, I don't really care to meet him, but uh, yeah, I here in the U.S., we are under capitalism, basically, and under capitalism, the only power that you've got is where you spend your money. So choosing the products and the companies that you buy from is all that I can do. Uh, so yeah, I am all in on Ghost. Uh, regardless of the fact that I have Rapid Fire and I have Tramps in all my gear, um, even if I didn't, it, it, even if I were on Unifies, uh, I would still be moving over to, uh, to Ghost because... Tony's a great guy, and I would rather support him uh, than TBS. Sorry, TBS. Um, is what it is. So yeah, I've uh, I've got a Facebook message into Tony begging him to uh, to let me pre-order one of the ghosts, uh, and I haven't heard back yet. But as soon as they're available, I'm I'm getting a setup for sure. Uh, so yeah, there you go. That, that's why I uh, personally 
don't support TBS. Uh, not saying that you shouldn't, just giving you guys the story of why I've ended up here. Uh, Sebastian Martinez uh, flies uh, three inch. He's so happy, but he wants a tiny. He can fly inside. Any suggestions, Sebastian? If you scroll down a little bit, I've got two uh, in in my description. I've got two little builds. Uh, if you want to fly indoors, I really do recommend one S. And both of the builds down below are one S tiny whoops. One of them is non HD. One of them is HD. Um, it's an affiliate link to the Mobula 6 over on GetFPV's website. Um, that Those are really kind of it. And then at some point, if the... Uh, so the, the only problem with the Mobula 6 is the, uh, the AIO board is very unreliable. But you get it? It'll, it'll probably work out of the box. If it doesn't, you bought it from GetFPV, so you can, the, their customer support is the best I've found. So if it doesn't work out of the box, they're going to make it right. Uh, if it does work out of the box, eventually the AIO is going to die. That's fine. I, next, you'll see in the description, I, I put plus newbie drone AIO board. So when the Happy Model Mobula 6 AIO board dies, don't get a replacement because it's just going to die again. Get the, uh, the newbie drone AIO board, drop that in, and that, in my opinion, is the best 1S whoop. If you want to take it a step further, you can get the Beta FPV Meteor 65 frame, and there's some other f things that are a little bit better. So, oh, speaking of, uh, I am selling my Isheen UZ65. Um, I just can't find a place for it in, in my little arsenal of, uh, of tiny whoops. Uh, it just doesn't fit in anywhere perfect, uh, which it's kind of a shame, but it's good for one of you guys. Um, yeah, so if you want to buy, first person to, to Facebook message me at CIDFPV um, that wants to buy a Isheen UZ65 with like 10 batteries through it, um, wins. Uh, this was, I want to say that it was like 85 plus shipping brand new I think for me um, so I am gonna sell it for 80 but I'm gonna throw a bunch of extra stuff in a bunch of extra batteries bunch of extra props so it'll be worth it but it, it's gonna be 80 bucks because it is pretty much brand new uh, I mean it's got a little bit of hair in the motors but you know <laughs> uh, so yeah let me know it comes with this cool case and uh, like I said I'll throw some extra stuff in uh, Isheen UZ65 for sale. <clears throat> I keep forgetting. I keep forgetting. Uh, scroll, 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 scroll. Drone Pilot is building a 2-inch Gep RC Rocket Plus frame, 1204 5000s, 2036 props, Hack RC 35, whoa, 35-amp, holy hell. Uh, F7 Kakute Mini, 650mAh4S, uh, calculated 3.5 to 4.5 minutes of flight time. Um, can drone pilot consider going down to 3S? Uh, most 2-inch rigs, when you're not going to do silly prop guards and all the nonsense that I'm doing, uh, most 2-inch rigs, in my experience, um, prefer to be a little bit lighter than the, the 4S batteries can handle. Um, my favorite two-inch combination was a uh, 1105 7500 kV motor on 3S 450 mAh batteries. Um, that setup felt really good. Uh, 1204 would absolutely work for that, but you would need more kV. You would need a 1204 7500. So the, it looks like the reason why you've gone to 4S is because those motors are 5,000 kV. Um, I would, if you're going to stay 4S, I would try to drop down to a 4S 450 um, just to kind of get the weight down. Two inch props, um, when, when the, you got to be really careful with the weight on a two inch prop. Think of the propeller size as like an umbrella um, when you're coming down off the throttle. 
um, because they're always on and they're always like making a disruptance in the air. Uh, so a two inch rig with the tiny little two inch propellers, um, it starts to really fall out of the sky when, when it's heavy. Um, so yeah, get, pay some, pay some mind to the all up weight of that build. And I think if you can bring that all up weight down, you're going to really like, um, the balance that you get, um, in the, in the flight characteristics, um, or just keep bashing on it the way it is because flying is fun. Jesse Stanley says, you kick ass, well said. Thank you, Jesse. Much appreciated. Uh, KD2RDH Larry is a free American. He has all the permits and the licenses to prove it. All right. I'm in. Uh, Stather says the stream is cutting out, but looks like everybody else says the stream's fine. Cool. Yo, man, flight says, nice to know. Uh, Richard Warwick is offering to be <laughs> no Richard Warwick saying that I will be your personal FPV Obi-Wan indeed I will uh Blind Luck FPV says Etsy what do you have on Etsy um I have my sticker packs uh at some point here when I get off my ass I'm gonna put these lovely little um uh USB TPU printed plug covers that uh, uh that Cement Kid made for me which was super cool of him and uh, I'm also going to be putting, I've, uh, I've got a lot of extra hardware, so I've made some like little bags of hardware and standoffs and, and random stuff that I'm going to put up on the Etsy store. Um, yeah, anything I can think of uh, to just try to generate income so that I don't have to go back to an office job. Um, that is the, uh, so I got laid off, oh God, I got laid off, uh, very early in the pandemic and, uh, I'm kind of giving it a go here to see if, uh, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm 39 years old. I have worked at a desk, at a cubicle, in an office for almost 20 years now. And, uh, yeah. I'm going to see if I can not do that again. Um, but I need to have multiple ways of, of having money come in. Like, I, I just, I can't expect you guys on Patreon to completely pay all my bills and my rent and food and, and all that stuff. Um, one of the keys to being, you know, a freelancer and entrepreneur Uh <laughs> is to have multiple revenue streams. And uh, yeah, so I need to do that. I need to have uh, an Etsy store. I need to have Fiverr going. I need to have the Patreon going. I need to do 24 hour streams so that you guys can support me amazingly during them. Um, so yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm trying my best. It, is, uh, it, it has been unbelievably challenging. Uh, it, it, uh, it really makes my, it, it's, the hardest part is what it's, is, is adjusting my mental illness and my mental health to, to this, uh, which is why you guys have seen me kind of disappear a little bit for three, four, five days at a time, but I'm trying my best, uh, and, and I'm, I'm just gonna try as hard as I can and leave it all on the table, and we'll see what the hell happens. Uh, no promises, but... I'm game. At some point, I'm going to wear a fucking green man suit on one of these streams, so you can't say I didn't fucking try. <laughs> uh, Flying in Braille says, how do I buy a logo pack? Flying in Braille, you go over to the Etsy store, you click buy now, you put it in your cart, and then magic happens. I haven't bought something on Etsy in a hot minute, uh, but yeah, they'll walk you through it. Uh, Yo Man Flight says, everyone asks for Seattle FBV purple part. Purple part. Purple part. What do you mean, y'all, man? Purple part. Purple parts? 3D printed? TPU purple parts? Oh, $100 belt. Ah! Alright, I'm gonna take that down. Because we don't have a good... Yeah, the, the Rip Squeak Micro was uh we we did here and, and we uh we filled that bar up so let me i'm just gonna 
I'm gonna pull the gear fun down for for a little bit here. We gotta get into the goddamn simulator. Let me uh, let me pull the the chat over to the left monitor here, and I'm gonna turn off this little kicker light because we're about to uh, be simming. We about to be simming. All right, let's turn this radio on. Welcome to Open TX. Here's what my radio looks like, guys. People every so often ask me. Um, that's a Brain 3D sticker pack. And uh, Tweet FPV, Super Secret Limited Edition, Ciotti FPV, Purple and Red Sparkly Grips. Literally Limited Edition. Um... Uh, Tweet FPV has run out of of the purple. He's trying to get more, um, but yeah, he has technically speaking run out. I told you guys. I fucking told you guys. I made a big joke out of the name, saying it was limited run. I I I made like a long version of the name. If you snoozed, I don't know what to tell you. All right, here we go. Velocity run. Uh, quitting things in hopes that Velocidrone will run properly. Let's give it a shot. Uh, scroll, 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 scroll. James Vaughton says, do you have any heat issues with the cover on the stack like that? Doesn't the VTX overheat? Uh, which... Which rig was I holding up at the moment is the question... Uh, James, do you have any heat issues with the cover on the stack like that? Were you? T I, I'm guessing that you were talking about the tiny trainer. Um, and if you were, no, it. Uh, I I thought the same thing, um, but no, it stays perfectly cool in there. Uh, there's like just enough airflow, I guess. Uh, all right, y'all man says I will design you an Insta360 go mount for that, no problem. Yo, man, there there already is one. If you go to um, it, it's really good too for the front. And now I know that we were talking about the tiny trainer. Um, yeah, it's uh, it's on Thingiverse. If you go to th for everybody, if uh, if you have a tiny trainer, go to Thingiverse and search tiny trainer. Don't put a space in between though. T i n t i n y t r a i n e r. No space. Um, fly thirty thirty fly five thirty three. Why can I never get the goddamn name of Evan's company right? Um, Fly five thirty three. I think that's. I think it is five thirty three. Um, three fifty three thirty. Whatever. They have uh, the official prints up on Thingiverse, and the uh, the Insta three sixty go on the on the nose mount thingy. It worked really well until I melted it. Because I'm a dumb person. Uh, okay, Velocidrone is up. If you have the most recent version of Velocidrone, you can join me in this multiplayer room. Uh, the multiplayer room is going to be called Freestyle Ciotti FPV, as it always is. And let me come here, and we're going to host a session. And then Velocidrone is going to get angry. Okay, I'm not going to go to City this time. I'm going to go to the most challenging map on here, which is... It's inside the... Uh... Oh, for Christ's sakes. Ah, no, you know what? We're going to go to Industrial Wasteland. That, that's one of my favorites, and it does run fine. We're going to go to uh, Industrial Wasteland for the map. All right, cool. Uh, open, auto-arming, select scenery, yes. Cool. Uh, I want to go here. And... Okay. John Dyson asks, How would you mount an Immortal L antenna on a whoop frame? Uh, John Dyson, to be honest with you, I would get... A, uh, a mini T. I would get one of the little uh, FPV cycle mini T's. Here, let me show you. What? Oh, come on now. Really? Hold on. Hold on. 
Uh, this is what you should do. Go to FPV Cycle. Go down here to... I mean, you can get these anywhere, but buy them from Bob because Bob is an excellent dude and you should support him. Uh, and then you're going to go... I hear somebody else, somebody's already in there in Velocitrone. <laughs> uh, radio Receivers. And there it is. Mini Mortal T. This is what you want uh, for a Tiny Whoop. There you go. Mini Mortal T. And yeah, there's a new V2 that works even better. This is what I think you should just get. Five bucks. Four bucks well spent. All right. Back to Velocidrone. Where is it? There it is. All right. Here's Velocidrone. And uh, Flying and Braille says, there you go, buddy. Just bought a sticker logo pack and the other sticker pack. Flying and Braille, you are the man. I will get that shipped out uh, tomorrow. Bird SC says, put a Tarsier in it. Uh, it will not fit a Tarsier. It's, uh, t uh, it's a tiny whoop mount only in there. Uh, KD2RDH Larry says, will they label the batteries however you want, like with your name? I, that's a really good question, Larry. I hope so. That would be pretty fucking cool. <laughs> uh, Mr. Huggy says, there's a Tattoo 450 MAH4S that's about the right size. My assumption is that's the old uh, silver label one. Yeah, so that's the old tattoo. Um, they don't hold up all that well, and they also don't have a great um, uh, C rating. The The tattoo R lines are comparable with the GNB. Um, but yeah, this old school tattoo 4S450, uh, I've had quite a few of these, and unfortunately they just don't last and they sag like crazy. Um, but GNB used to make a 454S, um, so they should be able to make it again. Uh, scroll, 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 scroll. Drone Pilot just purchased the stickers. He likes the NASA one. Drone Pilot, thank you for that. Very cool. And I'm scrolling, and I'm scrolling, and, I, and YouTube just did the thing. You goddamn son of a bitch. Scrolling back up. And scrolling back up even farther. Holy shit, I am so far behind on chat. All right, I'm just going to start flying. And I will talk through the chat questions as I fly. But I do need at least OBS to be on the screen over here. And there we go. Okay, cool. So... Larry asks, when is the Cinesplore build happening? Um, the Cinesplore build was supposed to happen uh, this week. It, I, I had my Whoop Wednesday um, live stream all set up. Let's just give Velocidrone a minute to kind of chill out. It usually takes a second to uh, kind of load stuff into RAM, I guess. Oh boy, let's just ram that. Great. Uh, yeah, now it's running okay. Okay, let's smash into that too. Uh, so yeah, Larry, uh, I'm going to try to do it uh, this Wednesday. Especially now that I'm waiting on the uh, on the Rip Squeak build. Or, yeah, the Rip Squeak micro builds. I, um, yeah, I'm going to probably bang out this two and a half inch build here that I was talking about earlier. I'm probably going to work on this off, offline, off the stream. And then, yeah, hopefully Wednesday we can dive into the Cinesplore. Didn't know that was there, did you? Oh, yeah! Ah, I'm not a good racer. Okay. Uh, more off axis FPV. Just saw the haircut in the chat. He says, Look at it. Tiago says, The funny thing is that Trappy tried to show how to measure with it and also failed. Those RF meters are uh, very imprecise. Tiago, see, that that's the thing. I, um, somebody, oh, fucker, who the hell tested it? So there, there is a test on. Oh, wait, no, Joshua tested it. 
Jo well, so when Joshua finally did a video about the... Um, so the, the only video that remains on Joshua's channel from all of the, the debacle with the, the VTXs, uh, the only video that remains is his test of, of the little power meter. And he sent the power meter and a bunch of, uh, VTXs to, um, a couple guys who had access to the $80,000 super fancy, you know, SWR measuring machines. And, uh, the results that came back basically said that the immersion RC power meter was like dead on. So, yeah, I didn't think it was, I forgot about that video. Um, when I rewatched that video, I was kind of like shocked. Um, I, I totally forgot that, um, well, because the, te the testing wasn't really about this. The, the testing was about the VTXs. The, the fact that this guy got tested um, was just like a little bonus in there. Uh, so yeah, look that, look that Joshua video up. And um, I hope I'm not getting it wrong. <laughs> I'm pretty, I, I, just, I just went through this and rewatched it. Um, so I'm pretty confident, but I'm certainly not infallible. Get in there. So if anybody hasn't discovered it yet, the sim, it might as well just be called the Matty the Matty Flip. The simulator might may as well just be called the Matty Flip practice device because it's kind of the only way to learn them without going completely broke. <laughs> <laughs> because there is so much timing involved in in this, you know, in doing a front flip, a blind front flip, right? Which is basically what a Matty flip is. That just learning where to pick up the throttle. Basically, the 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 hardest thing with Matty flips is learning when to pick up the throttle to generate rearward uh, momentum. And yeah, you should do that in the simulator so that you don't wreck seven thousand dollars in uh, real quads figuring that out. Not to mention that when you crash on a Matty flip, you usually crash full throttle. And uh, and it uh, it yeah breaks all your stuff. Uh, Burn DSC says, good to know, that's horrible, thought it was something about Crossfire. Nah, nothing about Crossfire. Uh, William Barlow says, what are your, what's your thoughts on the ghost? Uh, William, I'm all in. Uh, as soon as I can possibly get my hands on a ghost setup, I'm, I'm going in. So there will be, uh, Crossfire Nanos for sale soon enough. Uh, I will hopefully be able to, to offset the cost of, uh, completely switching over to ghost uh by selling off um all my crossfire stuff so that'll be cool uh but yeah i'm i'm all in man immersion rc to me uh is is the company that i want to support uh for a number of different reasons and yeah that be that well faxis says same don't be sorry to tbs they need to be sorry to us um, <laughs> Kevin Cortez says TBS equals the butt sex. <laughs> I don't. In 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 fairness, I don't want to like start a war or anything. Uh, that's that's not what this is about. Uh, it it's just yeah. It it's a personal thing. Larry had a comment. Get. Hidden, unreal expectations from goods and services you let me down. Yeah, that's true, but it, we at least try. Uh, I'm gonna. Well, I don't have a way of unhiding that message, but that that message is totally fine. Off axis, stop deleting Larry's messages. <laughs> stop it. Off axis, in general, stop moderating. <laughs> we uh, we don't have spammers. All all I really want you mods to do is uh is get rid of the spammers if somebody's even if somebody's talking smack which larry wasn't um let them talk smack i, I want to see the smack talk 
Um, uh, Tiago says, comes it Ciotti FPV hair more expensive? <laughs> Burn DSC says, anybody saying their long range can go further than five kilometers is lying a bit as the horizon line, if you stand on the ground level, is five kilometers away. Um, I mean, that's true, but when you go big long distances like that, you don't skim the ground. Um, when you do big long distance runs, you give yourself enough altitude um, to not have that issue. And so that that's kind of another thing, too, um, that I really love about Tony, is that he's a pilot. Like, like that dude flies for real. Um, and he does... Uh, one of the things that he's really into is doing big long distance runs with... Uh, uh, wings, which I know the TBS guys also used to do, uh, but yeah, he's he's like a legit pilot that legitimately tests this stuff and legitimately does big long distance runs, and I haven't seen that from TBS. I, I mean, they certainly have team pilots uh, that do that stuff, but yeah, uh, Tony's just, again, just Tony's a great guy, and um, I love the idea of being in a completely immersion RC ecosystem. Ugh, that fucking word. Oh God, let's ram into the smokestack. Um. All right, solo has arrived. What is good with you as well? Uh, Larry says, how fast will shipping be on the Etsy store? Uh, CID FPV, that worries me. Uh, same as everything else. I mean, what's, what, it, what is actually cool is that Etsy is, is keeping me, um, so Etsy has a lot of analytics and they don't like it when you don't ship fast. So, um, Etsy kind of has a fire under my butt to get this stuff shipped out. So, um, it won't be anything like the giveaways. I've gotten all the F's, I've gotten all the Etsy orders so far shipped out uh, within 24 hours. I I set my my response time in Etsy that you guys can see to one to three business days. So if I fall outside of three business days, I'll get smacked by Etsy. So I'm going to really try not to do that. No promises. Um, when my mental illness turns. I'm not really in control, unfortunately. Uh, so I, I'm just being real with you guys. I'm not going to promise anything, but I'm certainly going to work my ass off to uh, to make that happen. And I typically do better when there's a fire underneath my anus. So, yeah. I will do my level best. And for the record... I am almost caught up on the giveaways. Uh, I am only two weeks behind on the giveaways, which has never really happened. <laughs> so I'm getting better, guys. I, I, I really am. Um, to anyone who's had to wait a while for for their giveaway stuff, I apologize. Uh, yeah, I'm, I wake up. I try my best. You guys have been very understanding and very cool about it, uh, which I really do appreciate. But, um, I'm getting better. I am getting better. I am being a much more, uh, I don't know, man. Hard to talk and fly. Especially when you're doing this crazy shit. Oh, boy. Let's see who else is flying around. We've got Mr. Huggy. Here he is. Let's watch Mr. Huggy for a minute while I blast through some chats. Uh, okay. Drone Pilot says, earlier you said 3S and 1105 7500, and I didn't consider it. However, I was also thinking of adding Caddx Vista, and the weight would come up. Uh, but I will try it and agree the lighter the better. So, Drone Pilot, if you go to a Caddx Vista, leave your setup alone. I'll bet you, um, I'll bet you that your setup is yeah you're exactly right the Cadex Vista is going to add enough weight where 
Um, you may very well need 4S on that setup. Um, although, see, to be honest, though, I would still I would still bring it down. I would still bring it down. Um, two inch rigs to me are never going to be horrendously powerful anyway. So I would actually sacrifice a little bit of horsepower um, for a little bit better control. Of course, Mr. Huggy's going to land when I'm spectating him. So we're going to go over to Rotten Tomato and watch him for a minute. <laughs> um, ah, it looks like Mr. Huggy had to go. Uh, so yeah, drone pilot. I, I think I would actually still drop it down, uh, go up to 7,500 kV motors. Um, the 1204 is a great motor choice. Um, 1105, 1204, they're going to be very similar. Um, it's just that kV. You know, you're you're gonna if you go down to 3s, you're gonna need a motor that's 7,000, 7,500, 8,000 kV. Uh, so yeah, but yeah. <laughs> uh, Burned ESC says, haha. Off Axis says, I got those stickers on the mail on Friday and now finding a place to put them. That's the important part. Um, and James Vaughton was talking about the tiny trainer. Awesome. I was right. Uh, Weirdo with a skateboard says, Aret. What's A R E T? Is that another uh, British one? Uh, Weirdo with a skateboard, busy duct taping everything and anything. What else do we have? Am I really 30 minutes behind on the chat? Oh my god. 533 double A says. Thank you, double A. Uh, uh KD2RDH Larry. I have to I have to manually read all of his comments because goddamn off axis keeps fucking <laughs> hiding them for some reason. <laughs> Um, KD2RDH Larry says, I saw that there are a bunch of official Radio Master TX-16 parts on Thingiverse also. Uh, and then he said hello to Weirdo. Alright, and then here's another one that Off Axis cruelly deleted. Uh, Larry says, I'm good Weirdo, sitting at work for a few more hours, how are you? Uh, Alright, Guillermo is here. Guillermo says, do you think that the new Ghost could work with 24, uh could work with 2.4 since it's using uh, Laura chip. Yeah, it is 2.4, Guillermo. Uh, the Ghost setup is is 2.4. Uh, uh, do you think the new... Oh, yeah, we got the same thing. Guillermo just spamming the living shit. So, so here's my question for you. <laughs> All faxes. Guillermo spammed <laughs> the same question four times, but he survives... And KD2RDH Larry said normal things, not four times in a row, um, and and he got attacked. So, what do you what are you doing off axis? What do you what what's happening here? What are you what are you up to in this chat? Um, oh shit! I forgot to do my new little trick, and it it. Oh, he asked you to. <laughs> what? Larry, why did you ask him to? You guys are fucking weird. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to understand it. You guys are good. I just want to make sure... I don't know, whatever. I trust you guys. Um... <laughs> oh, and there's Off Axis yelling at Guillermo. Okay, cool. <laughs> Weirdo's angry because he spent 20 quid on Velocidrone and it doesn't fucking work. Weirdo, do this. Uh, there is a Velocidrone uh, Facebook group, and the the developers are in there, and they will help you get it working. Uh, so jump in there. Those guys will totally help you. They're really nice. Uh, they're totally cool people, and yeah, they'll hook you up. They're, I'm assuming you're on a PC, so I can't even begin to help, uh, but yeah, those guys will totally help you out, man. Oh, Guillermo says, I mean, uh, can we really go away with a 2.4 video? Um, okay. Oh, yeah, I remember. Okay, Larry. Yeah, you're good. Um, <laughs> uh, I... Gear, so Guillermo, are you? Is your question? I think I, I think I understand your question. I think you're asking. Um, 
if we're going to move over to double A. Give double A some stream time. Ooh, double A just crashed into the stairs so hard that even I felt it. Uh, I think what you're asking is if I think uh, will that at some point immersion will move their ecosystem over to 2.4 video as well because 2.4 video is longer range. If that's your question, um, the issue with 2.4 video from what I understand is uh, it doesn't like, it's not as good as 5.8 when it comes to getting multiple people up in the air at the same time. Uh, so anything's possible uh, and Tony is a long range guy, so it, it wouldn't surprise me if at some point there was some 2.8, 2.4 video magic in the ghost system, uh, but uh, it's not something that I think I would ever use because it's really, from what I understand, it's really just for like no holds barred, just range, 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 um, without, you know, I don't know, whatever. I don't know is the answer. I don't know anything. I'm, I just work here. <laughs> uh, that would be cool. And it wouldn't surprise me though. <laughs> um, Proton to go says, can you show and talk a bit on how to precisely put the quad in difficult places like for a dive? Yeah, for sure. Proton. Um, and that's a really, really, really good question. All right. Uh, Guillermo then says, why Ciotti recommends Mobula 6 with newbie drone board? Why not get the newbie drone uh, from the get-go? Uh, so we're watching heads right now for a minute. Great question, Guillermo. Uh, the, the motors on the Mobula 6... So you can get the Mobula 6 with uh, the, the 0802 25,000 kV motors, and those motors are like a game changer. They're fucking crazy. They're so, so, so powerful. Uh, they make a, a, a 1S Tiny Whoop just feel so incredibly alive. Heads is a fucking ripper. Heads is getting it done in Velocidrone right now. Um, so, yeah, there's that. And then there's also that the, uh, the Mobula is like the lightest weight setup, too. Um, so... And also, it comes with uh, a really good camera in the, the run cam, uh, whatever the hell it is. So basically, yeah, the, the, the Mobula 6, other than the AIO, has all of the best other components. Um, you could argue about the frame, but the frames are only $3, so just get another frame. Um, but yeah, the, the Mobula, in my opinion, has all the best gear for... A hilariously low price uh, and other than the, the AIO yeah that's what I was trying to get at uh, 661 rightly saying yep Joshua Bardwell proved Trappy wrong multiple times absolutely uh, three yeah the ghost three pack of receivers with the module is 149 which is a, a great price a totally fair price uh, <laughs> I keep scrolling past off axis going, he asked me to! <laughs> oh, God, you guys are weird. <laughs> you guys aren't weird. I just like saying it. Uh, Burn DSC says, exactly. Uh, thanks, I was talking on the ground level flying uh, four to six meters up. Yeah, on the ground level, you got to be really careful. Shit, man, I noticed that, like, if I fly, if I fly really low to the ground for, like, more than, I don't know, 30, 40, 50 seconds, I start to really um, see a difference being super low to the ground versus getting even a couple feet up in the air. Um, so, yeah, going, like, miles out, that's going to become a big deal. Uh, Speedy Turtle, how are you? I am good. And scroll, 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 scroll. Free Lojo, you be getting the organization. Yeah, I know, right, man? Uh, Weirdo with a skateboard says it's like all right. Ciotti FPV. Uh, what's that mean, Weirdo? I'm intrigued. You got me, dude. I'm intrigued. 
Uh, Lilithium says, happen to have a used flight controller that's already set up for sale, trying to figure out how to get back in the air without a computer. Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, what you could do, Lilithium, is get a Speedy B. Uh, you can get a Speedy B for like 30 bucks, like 20 or 30 bucks, and I believe you can do everything that you need to do on the Speedy B um, on your cell, on, on your uh, iPhone or Android without needing a computer. So that that's what I think you might want to do is look into the Speedy Bs. Um, even if I did have something that was already set up, uh, I wouldn't have the... Uh, it would be a real pain in the ass because, like, I would need to know. There, it's, it's just, yeah, it's. I, I can't, I can't imagine doing that. Being able to get it set up exactly right for your switch positions, for your, um, uh, for your, whatever protocol you're on, you know, your VTX tables, all that stuff. That would be really challenging. So I think you're going to be best off. Uh, getting a speedy bee. All right, Proton to go with the excellent question of how do you uh, put the quad into. Um, don't ban Guillermo. Guillermo is a pain in the ass, but we love him. Guillermo, you're a pain in the ass, but I love you. Um, don't make me not love you. <laughs> um. Oh, for Christ's sakes, I fucked up again. Oh, no. Oh, I'm caught up on the chat. Last chat before we uh, before we show this is Squishy FPV, who has to disagree. The newbie drone brushless motors really outshine the Happy Model ones. In addition, the new Pico Razor looks amazing compared to the Nano 3, even the OG Nano 3. Interesting, Squishy. Um, I, I, I disagree. Um, I've had much better luck with the... Um, not better luck, but the the extra amount of so i was a um here i'll fly while i'm telling this story um so i was a uh, a newbie drone prototype tester for the uh for their brushless rig and on the uh on the prototypes we got 0802 20 000 kv motors um and they were okay they, they were they were not bad uh when the it, they still lacked a little bit of power in in my uh, opinion and then when the uh, when the production one came out it was only on 18,000 kV motors and those I really had an issue with like that that was it started to feel like a brushed whoop um, and I don't know tiny whoop batteries are so easy to change and so quick to change that um, I don't have a problem with getting like a minute and a half, two minutes runtime. If the, um, as long as I get the extra power that I've always wanted from a tiny whoop, um, to be able to do stuff like throws inside and, and, you know, some like off throttle moves. Uh, if you're not doing that kind of stuff, then the the twenty thousands or the eighteen thousands are going to be totally fine. Uh, so yeah, I I I love that uh, that the newbie drone setup is is working for you, and their their motors are enough power. Every there's no there's no right answers. Uh, for me and for with the uh, with the throttle sk or with the uh, both throttle and PID scaling available in Betaflight now, uh, I am pretty hell-bent on, b within reason, like what I'm not doing is buying 2600 kV motors and running them on 6S. Um, I'll buy like a, two like a 1900 or a 2000 or a 2100 kV motor and run those on 6S on my 5-inch rigs. Um, but kind of across the board now, Again, within reason, I am buying the highest KV motors that I can get my hands on and then just scaling them down within Betaflight. This way, if I ever choose to go down 
in cell size, I don't have to completely buy a whole new fleet of motors, right? Um, there is, I, I, I talked to Ryan Harrell a bunch about it, um, about scaling down and what the whether or not there are significant advantages to... So the, the, the only reason to not, across the board, buy the highest possible KV motors that you can find is that there is a little bit of an electrical uh, efficiency advantage to 6S on like a 1600 kV motor versus a scaled down 2600 or 2700 or 2800. Um, Ryan Harrell said that it's ba it, it's not a huge difference, but there is a there is a di can you dive this? That's a hard dive. Holy shit. Um, yeah, he said it's not a huge difference. <laughs> I can't believe it. Wow. Um, yeah, so I'm just kind of approaching it um, as realistically as possible and saying, all right, well, yeah. I think you guys get what I'm shittily trying to say there. Um, what were we even talking about? Um, 661 says Ladrib has a restraining order against Guillermo. Is that true? That better not be true. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, oh, 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 right. We were talking about Squishy. Um, yeah, and then the, the, the camera thing, I, what I will say is that the uh, the Runcam Nano 3 camera is not good in uh, in low light. So, yeah, I don't know. The, the, I don't think you can go wrong with either. Here's the big thing, though. Fucking A, the Mobula 6 is cheap. $80, dude. It's almost half... It is half the price. It is half the price of the newbie drone setup. Um, again, the newbie drone setup is phenomenal, uh, but... My God, the Mobula Six. It, it's it's also incredibly light. If the um, if the if the Happy Model AIO doesn't fail on the uh, on the Mobula Six, then that is hands down the lightest setup, and um, that makes a huge difference when you're one S and and you're inside. You know, at like twenty grams, if you lose a gram. That's a 5% weight savings. Think about that in a 5-inch rig. What's a 5% um, weight savings on a 600-gram rig? That's a lot of weight, right? So th always think of weight savings in percentages. And, uh, yeah, the the Mobula 6 is quite a bit lighter than the Newbie Drone uh, uh, brushless. All of this being said... Uh, I don't have a Mobula 6, and I do have a... I have two Newbie Drone brushless rigs. So, I mean, take that with... Take, take that however you want. Uh, they're all really good, but if if I was on... I mean, I am on, on a budget, uh, and, if, and if I could only have one Tiny Whoop, it would actually be a Mobula... What it would be, to be honest with you guys, uh, if, I could, if I could do it all over again, right... And just like, yeah, just do it all over again. I would get a Mobula 6 and a Mobula 6 HD. And I would take the 25,000 KV motors off the Mobula 6. I would put those on the Mobula 6 HD. I would take the 22,000 KV motors off the Mod Mobula HD. I would put those on the Mobula 6. And I would either sell the Mobula 6 or just have two tiny whoops and then um if the happy model board went i would replace it with the newbie drone board just so that i didn't have to get into that the vietnam that the happy model board seemed to be uh and yeah that would sort of be it for me uh all right 
Oh, the hummingbird stuff. Yeah, I haven't I haven't gotten into the hummingbird stuff mainly because I fly acro, um, but I've heard it's really I've heard really good things about it. Uh, so yeah, that makes total sense, Squishy. Uh, okay, so uh, here we go. Play. So this is one of the hardest things to learn because you don't get to do it a lot, and it's basically how. Here's the real question. The real question is, how do I practice... Uh, how do I practice dives? How do I practice being uh, accurate while diving? And for me... For me, it's actually much more than that. Um, because not only do I want to be accurate when I'm, do when I'm falling and, and or doing dives or whatever... But, um, personally for me, a big part of my flying is covering up mistakes and covering up m corrections and or just not having to make corrections. Um, with lining up dives, that becomes extremely difficult because the only way to really do it is and have no corrections is to do the whole thing zero throttle. And in order to do the whole thing zero throttle, um, you have to get the throw absolutely perfect and that's hard to do um one of the the best ways to get dialed in on that is to fly the exact same rig over and over again um so now we're talking about building multiples right building two or three or four identical rigs this way when you break them because flying uh fearlessly is another kind of cheat code um so by having multiple rigs you can crash a lot and just steal parts from the other rigs to fix it, um, to fix each one of them, right? Also, just having multiple rigs, when you break it in the field, instead of spending time fixing it while you're at the spot, um, you just throw it in the trunk and grab another one. You don't have to have multiple GoPros, right? You just need to have multiple actual quads. And, uh... So yeah, th those are a couple of the big tricks, but, uh, so yeah, for me, it's about, uh, trying to make it look like it was on purpose, even if it wasn't. So let's pick the hardest gap in this entire map, which is this one right here. This gap is extremely difficult. It's very tight. It's very dark. And it also has this, uh, lip here. So in order to hit this gap from this direction over here, right? In order to hit this gap in this direction, I can't just fall into it. I have to overshoot it and then blip back into it, which is incredibly difficult. So we'll do that second. We'll do it from this way first. Doing this gap from this side, big throw. I love to go inverted um, as soon as possible. And then one of the things that it's incredibly hard to teach yourself, but it's also incredibly important is which way do you go inverted, right? So when I'm shooting this gap, the way that I flick the... Oh, here, let me give you guys a stick overlay. Um, the the way that I do the... The direction that I do the initial snap is the direction that I would rather be um, when I'm going to be off throttle. So, for example, if I'm coming into this gap and I want to throw it into this gap from over here, I'm going to do it to the right so that the entire time that I'm off throttle, my thrust direction is going to be able to point me into the gap. You see that? So right now, I'm, I'm staying zero throttle the entire time just to kind of show you guys. But in a second, when I want to actually hit this gap, I'm going to give a little bit of maintenance throttle as I do this slow rotation. So snap, and again, I'm still doing it zero throttle. So that's the first decision. The first decision is, if I'm gonna throw myself at this gap, am I gonna snap to the right, or am I gonna snap to the left? And in this case, snapping to the left gives me no adjustment, right? If I wanna do this gap while snapping to the left from an approach over here, here's how I have to do it. I have to throw like that and then snap to the left. 
And now when I do that, I have much less of an adjustment to get in between those two buildings, right? Whereas if I do it with a snap to the right, I can blip the throttle and really move myself. Right? You guys, can can you guys kind of see that? Does that does that make sense? The, a lot of this stuff, this is my first time explaining a lot of this stuff, so um, A, bear with me. B, please tell me if, if it doesn't make sense, because I can explain these things a different way, um, but I need to know. I need to know if, if this does make sense the way I'm explaining it. So, like, specifically, you know, be very specifically if I wanted to do this gap from down here right one of the things that I try to do is is always kind of stay as low to the ground as possible so this gap from here is a perfect example of why I would choose to roll right all right so early on before the the you know before you, the gap even starts you're gonna figure out which way are you gonna snap are you gonna snap to the right or are you gonna snap to the left and I also don't recommend doing an entire 180 snap because then, again, same deal. You don't have any adjustment. When, when you do a full 180 snap, you're, you just have to sit here and wait. And maybe it makes it, maybe it doesn't. But you have no left to right adjustment. And there's another little bit of a cheat here too. When, when you go up here and you throw this half snap and then you continue that roll, you actually do have a little bit of front, you, you can add a little bit of, um, a little bit of forward momentum. Like doing that little throttle blip that I just gave it, it actually did throw it forward a little bit more. Um, it's not much, but if you just need a little tiny bit more to get into that gap, um, if you're doing this like half snap or quarter snap and then slow, um, slow continuation of this roll, you can generate a little bit more forward momentum to, to just barely make the gap. So those are, um, those are a couple things that you want to think of on the beginning of the throw. Then you've got the rest of the throw to kind of line things up and you can kind of sneak in some more adjustments there. Uh, so I do this throw, I throw it really high, I throw it too high. If I keep rotating to the right, if, if I just keep... So this is where one of the big things that I want to teach people is this... Um, Drew calls it committing, committing to the move. Um, I prefer to just use two words for this, uh, and those two words are leave it. Um, I want to teach, I want to scream the two words, leave it from the rooftops because like a big part of your flying looking amazing is just leaving it. You commit to a stick movement and you leave it and you just see what happens. You commit and you just leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. Now get out of it, right? Throw it, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it, leave it. Wait, just wait. See what happens. See where it's going to go. Sometimes you're going to be sur surprised by where it goes. Sometimes it's going to perfectly clear the gap, but you're not going to know that until you get a little bit closer. I don't know if it's going to make it yet. Now I know it's going to make it. But if I hadn't waited that amount of time, I wouldn't have known, right? Eventually, uh, you're... It, it, and it's all about, like, that, that perception, right? That, like... Uh, not perception. Perception is not the word. Um, it's once you've done a throw. What's up, Mark? How are you, man? Uh, once you've thrown a 610 gram rig, let's say, over a building 700 times, you're going to get better at uh, being able to judge how far it's going to travel and stuff like that. But um, you're always going to be able to judge that better as you get closer to the edge of that building. So just leave it, 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 now fix it. And oh look, a door appeared, right? When I threw it, just now, when I threw it over this rooftop, I did not remember that that door was there. 
But I just left it and I left it and I left it and I left it. And oh my God, the door presented itself and I fucked up. But if I was a better pilot, I would have flown through that door. So um, the couple people that I've taught this so far have really latched on to those two words, leave and it, leave 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 the sticks where they are and see what happens. Um, if that doesn't connect in your brain, maybe think of what Drew says, which is commit, commit to the stick movement, commit to the throw, uh, and wait as long as you possibly can to, um, to recover from it or to just move on to the next, uh, to the next kind of thing, right? Uh, so yeah, those are a couple things. Other than that, to be honest, um, be, becoming accurate with dives is just a matter of doing it over and over and over again. And unfortunately, in the simulator, uh, the physics just aren't there. So you can learn a bunch in the sim, but you're just going to have to do a bunch of it for real. Um, so like... Look for spots that have smaller, safer dive gaps, like like bigger, more open. Well, let me try to find one on here. So if I was flying this spot in real life and I wanted to practice dives without destroying all my gear, I would practice them. You know, this is a big part of flying too, is like finding, finding spots and finding like areas in spots where you can practice certain moves um so i'm flying around here i'm looking for a i'm looking for kind of like a safe spot to practice dives haven't quite found it yet okay so these smokestacks are actually pretty good so these smokestacks are big vertical uh big vertical things that will uh, show you what's happening during your dive. So I come up here and I do a dive, and because that smokestack is nice and tall, I can tell if I'm falling away from it or towards it. Um, I can also do a dive on this and very easily get out of it, right? If I do a dive on this smokestack and there, I panic, I can just throttle up and push myself away from it, right? Because I'm not locked into it. I'm not diving inside of the smokestack where there's no escape. I'm diving on the outside where there's plenty of escape. <clears throat> so this smokestack would be a perfect example of a, of a nice safe spot where you can practice dives. And you can just basically practice what happens when you're looking straight down and you blip the throttle. Or, you know, when you're... When you're next to something, I guess these little antenna tower things would be good too. You're next to something and you blip the throttle. Because when you're when you're falling straight down, the the throttle doesn't have to fight against gravity. So the throttle is going to be much more active. And, it, and it's going to have much more of an effect on... Uh, than you're used to on the way the quad moves. Now... Moving beyond that, if you really, if, if you're looking for like a dive gap, let me see if I can find a, a somewhat, oh perfect. So this is about as safe as it's going to get here for a dive gap. Nice big hole, and then you can go into it and then figure out what the hell's going on. So this would be great for a dive gap to practice what happens when you do like the, because most dives are going to happen from a throw, and then you can, and then you, um, you invert. And then you arrest your momentum with a little throttle blip. So these nice big holes here in the roof allow you to practice that. How much of a throttle blip do you need? Uh, how much time do you well, How much time do you need to get fully inverted? And then once you've done that throttle blip, how long do you wait before you recover once you're in this crazy building? Um, and the last thing that I'm going to leave you guys with in the last three minutes here, we're not going to do any work on this two inch rig, but that's okay. Um, cause it's Sim Sunday. It's not two and a half inch rig build Sunday. Um, I want to go out and fly and it's also, it's almost five o'clock. So, um, the last thing I'm going to leave you with is don't overthrow, uh, from a height perspective. You might, it, it, 
it seems like throwing yourself up nice and high so that you have time to then line it up and fall down through it, it seems like that's going to be easier, but it, it kind of isn't because by the time you get down there, you're going to be hurtling towards that gap at 7,000 miles an hour and it, you're just going to, you're just going to bail because then you, I mean, you kind of should at that point because if you get it wrong, you're going to wreck everything. So alternatively, um, we'll do this, we'll do this gap that we were doing in the first place. So here's an example of that, right? I threw myself up really high. Hold on. I throw myself up high enough. So I'm coming up here. I want to make sure I get it. I'm really high. And now I'm, you see what I mean? Like I'm going so fast by the time I get to the gap that it becomes a lot harder, believe it or not, to, uh, to get it lined up. Whereas if you throw it just barely enough, you're going, believe it or not, you're, when you get to the gap, you're going nice and slow because your quad is finishing its upward momentum and beginning its downward momentum. And in that moment, things are happening nice and slow. See what I mean there? So don't, um, don't overthrow a gap. I mean, don't underthrow it. Like, like don't skip, like if you skim the surface like that close, it becomes really hard. Um, but there's a sweet spot and usually that sweet spot is lower than you would believe. Um, so yeah, don't get your elevation up too high. And if you do just bail, like if, if you throw yourself for a gap and you threw yourself up way too high, don't just like, Oh no, we'll be fine. Because when you hit that fucking, when you hit that roof, it's going to be game over and it's going to be the most expensive goddamn gap you've ever dove. Um, the only time I'll ever do something like that is if I'm on like a tear if I'm like 30 seconds into like a real flow session, I'll uh, I'll maybe maybe let one fall really far into a gap, uh, but for the most point for the most part, uh, I will not. I, if I threw myself too high for the gap, the uh, the the payoff. Although I mean it does look badass if you shoot a gap and you fall into it at a thousand miles an hour, but I don't know. I just I can't afford to to, especially with what session fives cost. Um, I can't really afford to to break too many more session fives. <laughs> oh, that was a good one. I think I'm gonna end on that. Now nah, we'll end on some Matty flips. Ah, oh. all right. So yeah, there's a bunch of stuff for you to try. Proton, great question. Um, those are the questions that that I'm really looking for. So when you guys have flying questions like that um that's what i want to sort of be my thing in the uh in the fpv universe is uh the fpv instructor a domain which i do own um i just have to do all the other work that is getting something off the ground um, so let's do a couple Matty flips and then I'm going to go out and fly and then I will see you guys again tomorrow. Ah! Oh, sloppy boy. Uh, so one of the, uh, the, what map is this? Toxic says toxic. This is industrial wasteland. Um, so yeah, we do a couple more Matty flips so that you guys can see the, pay attention to the throttle application and where, uh, and where the camera is looking for that. That is like everything to a Matty flip. It's all about when you put the throttle on and what what is like like what you're looking at that that's really how to lock maddie flips in and as you can see i i don't do them all that often um because i don't do them in real life all that much because they're still blind i mean they're still risky uh and the crashes tend to be pretty violent but there is uh 
the the secret to Matty Flips is just picking the throttle up early enough to generate rear roots momentum. Usually the problem most people have with Matty Flips is they throw it over and then they wait, 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 and now they put the throttle on. And if you get it just right, that'll work. But uh, typically you don't get it quite right. And what happens is you put the throttle on too late and then you just do that and you stop and you don't go back under the object. So one of the things that you can do is just do like a double blip on the throttle. Do like an initial blip to make sure that you get the backwards momentum because the earlier you blip it, the more backwards momentum you're going to generate. Um, so yeah, doing like a first little bit too early blip um, is going to make sure that you generate the backwards momentum and then you do a second blip to kind of save yourself from hitting the ground. Um, that's one of the ways to do, that's, that's the way that I tend to do Matty flips actually. Uh, because just waiting, waiting until the last possible second is, is very, very difficult. As you can see right there. Uh, the other thing is to try to keep, if, if you're just object, if you're just Matty flipping like, like a pipe or something like that, if you keep the pipe in the very top of the view of your view, uh, it makes it a lot easier. And it also keeps you from getting too far away from it. Um, but yeah, like I said, practice in the simulator with Matty Flips is huge. And with that, I'm going to leave you guys. Uh, J Drone says, hi dude, could you do a tutorial on inverted yaw spins, please? Uh, I do not know how to apply throttle when inverted mode 2. Uh, J Drones do this. Uh, Ladrib has the best. Uh, just search for Ladrib Trippy Spin. You'll find his video. Um, he's got the best video I've seen. Oh, wait, no, you said inverted yaw spins. Um, so. Well, with an inverted yaw spin, you really don't apply the throttle. Um, there's plenty of uh, YouTube inverted yaw spin videos, but basically, you're not going to apply the throttle until you bring it back around. So you got to wait until... That was pretty gnarly. Um, yeah, you just have to wait with the throttle on an inverted yaw spin. So you're going to throw it up. The big important thing is to get the horizon line right about there. The, the horizon... Uh, the horizon line, it's all about the horizon line and it depends on your up tilt but usually you want the horizon line right about there like two thirds of the way down the uh, and it also depends on how close you are to the ground but it's pretty much right there that's pretty much where you want the horizon line to be for a um, <clears throat> for an inverted yaw and the way that you can tell that is just to do the inverted yaw and if it wa if everything wobbles then you didn't get that horizon line quite right. So put that horizon line somewhere else. If it doesn't wobble, then you've got it perfect. And yeah, rotate around as much as you want and then just throw a little, you know, rotate as much as you want, a bit of roll, and then throttle to get out. And that's it. That's really the only throttle application. Um, keep in mind when you're doing inverted yaw spins that yaw cranks the throttle up a bunch. It doesn't do it in the sim as much as it does in real life. It still does do it in the sim though, right? Because if you... Uh, I guess it doesn't. There it does. So yeah, I'm zero throttle just adding yaw back and forth. And in order to create yaw, it has to use thrust. It uses a little bit of braking, but it also uses thrust. My thrust is all the way down, guys, right? Oh, fucking A. You guys couldn't see anything that I just showed you. There's the th there's where you want the horizon. Sorry, guys. Uh, William Barlow uh, just messaged me on Facebook. Seattle FPV. Uh, here's where the horizon line on most setups should be. 30 degrees of up tilt. You pretty much want the horizon line there. Two thirds of the way down. Sometimes it needs to be even lower than that. Um, you can figure that out by just doing the move and seeing if the horizon wobbles. You want the horizon to spin completely even. Um, so yeah, this that is 99% of an inverted yaw spin is where you put the horizon. And that's pretty much where you want it to be. Um, what I was saying a minute ago, though, is keep in mind 
that when you add the yaw, it's going to thrust you down towards the ground faster. So that's why when I do inverted yaw spins, I do them very slowly. Um, I also think it looks better that way. Um, but yeah, inverted yaw spin, it's all about finding that, that horizon line. Get Do as much rotation as you want. Bang some yaw, bang some throttle to get out of it. I'm sorry, bang some roll and then bang some throttle to get out of it. Spin, roll, throttle. And that gets you out of it. And that is about it. Inverted yaw spins are much simpler than you would think um, once you realize for your amount of up tilt where that horizon line needs to be. And then it's just a matter of putting that horizon line there every single time. And um, yeah, you can do some cool shit with it. I prefer this. This is one of my favorites here. Bring it around and then just roll out of it. And it's, it's a very step-by-step -step thing. Throttle, pitch forward, horizon line, yaw, roll, throttle again. Cool? Keep going, J Drones. You'll get it. You will get it, man. It's one of those moves that, moves that takes a lot of practice because it's very disorienting. All right, people. I'm going to go fly. I will see you guys <clears throat> tomorrow night at 10 o'clock Eastern time for all the giveaways and all that fun stuff. And uh, I'll still have non frovid 19 hair. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging. Uh, links down below. The Linktree link will bring you to all my other links. Um, thanks to everybody that does support. Um, if you don't support me yet uh, and you like what I'm doing, support me and I'll do it full time. That's literally it. That's that's the, the actual situation right now. If enough of you guys support me, I will do this full time. And um, for as long as I possibly can. What do you think of that? Thanks for hanging, guys. You guys fucking rule. Uh, FPV Therapy is a group over on Facebook that you should join to learn more about mental illness. Um, it is something that I struggle with each and every day. It is very misunderstood and um, it is very, very powerful. So get on over there, learn something about it. Maybe you have it, maybe you don't. I bet you somebody in your friends or your circle of friends or family does, and they would love it if you understood it a little bit more. Um, so head on over, FPV Space Therapy on Facebook. Get on over there. Um, and remember, I don't, don't let me down. Don't let me down. Remember. Ne Ow, fucker, never give up! <laughs> Alright guys, be good. I'll see you fuckers tomorrow. Uh, let's all go out and fly. Later! Oh, let me give you guys a, a, a little bit more... Oh, I didn't mean to do that. I didn't mean to quit Velocidrone. That just... Uh, I think that just grenaded the whole room. Whoopsie. Uh, here you guys go. A little bit more uh, from that spot that I opened this um, stream with. Here's the uh, the battery before that one. With copyright free music. Ha ha ha. Alright guys, I'll see you tomorrow. Enjoy a little bit more flying at that crazy spot. Have you seen the bridge? Where's that confounded bridge?
radical left has taken over Joe Biden. Trillions in new taxes. Amnesty for a... See you guys tomorrow. Kitten. There he is. People that stay late get all the secrets. Goodbye!